How's it going everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some more random leak code questions. Before I get started, make sure to check out my platform, Algos with Michael, to prepare for your coding interviews. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you can use the code ALGOHELP for a discount on the platform. Anyways, on to the video. All right, the first random problem is binary tree right side view. Given the root of a binary tree, imagine yourself standing on the right side of it. Return the values of the nodes you can see ordered from top to bottom. Pretty easy problem to at least understand conceptually. Um, we're going to need a node at each level of the binary tree, right? So if there's three levels, we're going to need three nodes. If there's 10 levels, there will be 10 nodes. To me, this seems like a level, a level order traversal. So we're going to use a queue. And then I think we just have to keep track of what is the last element that we add for that level. And that would be the answer. I don't think I need to go over an example for this because it's kind of straightforward, I think, like level order traversals. I guess the first thing I want to do is create my result. And if my root is null, then I can just return the result. And then now I need to create my queue. And so we're always going to have a, a root node. So that would mean that we need to add. So first we need to add our root into our queue. And I actually, this needs to be a no, a tree root or a tree node. And then we're also going to say result dot add root dot val, right? And now we can start our level order traversal. So while the queue's not empty, we're going to grab the size and we're going to loop up to the size. And then, oh, and we also, I mean, let's just, let's continue with the normal level order traversal first, and then we'll figure out the other logic. Um, if root, or not root, we actually need to, pull tree node node equals q dot pull if node dot left not null right then we just add it q dot add node dot left if node dot right is not equal to null q.add node.write. And then at the end, we're going to return our result. So now we just need to determine which node value we're adding to our result. If i is equal to size minus 1, it's the last element being pulled, right? Q dot add or not Q result dot add node dot val right so if it's the last index we're at add that node's value and I think that's it let's try it oh oops okay we added we added the root twice so why don't I just I'll just remove that nice. All right, the next problem is implement try prefix tree. A try pronounced as try or prefix tree is a tree data structure used to efficiently store and retrieve keys in a data set of strings. There are various applications of this data structure, such as autocomplete and spell tracker. Implement the try class. Try initializes the try object. We have an insert function, inserts the word. 
and then a search and a starts with. So I've, I've actually done this exact problem on my channel and I'm pretty comfortable with tries. So this, uh, I mean, it'll be a good refresher. I haven't implemented a try in a long time, but I definitely know how to do this. Um, so the first step, um, would be to create a try node, um, some way to represent, you know, the, the data structure itself. Right. So we'll say public class, we'll call it node and what is going to be inside of our node. And, and so one thing actually that's important is one of the constraints is that the letters will only be lowercase letters. So that's going to be really helpful for what we use inside of our node class. Um, the first thing we're going to need is a way to represent all of those characters, right? And an easy way to do that is just using an integer array of size 26, because that would mean we have 26 letters in the alphabet for each node. Um, so we can just say letters, right? Yeah, let's also letters. We're also going to need, we need a, a, a Boolean to identify if the node itself is a word. So we can just say is word. We also need a character, char C, right? Because each node will be mapped to a specific character. Oh, wait, I'm, I totally messed line 20 up. It shouldn't be an integer array. It should be a node array, right? Because we're going to be having nodes connected to other nodes. See, I'm, it's a good thing I'm doing a refresher. So uh, the next part, we need to create a constructor. Uh, we're probably only going to pass in the character. And then we can just initialize this is word equals false. I know that I know that's repetitive, but it's more just for niceness. Um, okay, so now we can start implementing our try. Um, every try needs a root, right? Because it's a it's a tree. Every true has a tree has a root. So we can say private node root, and then our try constructor can initialize a new node. And one trick I like to do, at least when I implement my tries, is just escape an empty like dummy character. Technically, we could we could use something else because we're only having lowercase Eng English letters. But I don't know. I just always do that. Um. And so now we just need to insert. So we need to loop over all of the characters. So for char c word dot to char array, right? Or wait, we actually, do we need to not convert it? No, I think this is okay. Okay, and so now what we need to do is check if, oh, we need a, a, a running node to keep track of, and it's going to start at our root, right? And so in here, now we need to look up if that node exists. So we would say cur dot letters. And it's going to be C, character C minus lowercase a. And we need to check if it's null, right? Because if it's null, we create a new character or a new node, right? So maybe we just do this. Node, node equals that. If it's null, then we're going to create a new node of character C. Otherwise, just grab it, right? 
You know, and a simpler way to write this, this might be, I'm making it unnecessarily complicated. I think we just do this. Like we check if it's null, right? And if it is, then we're going to create a new node. And that new node needs to be assigned to this, right? And then once we are done with that check, we just need to update our current. So cur equals cur dot letters of C minus A, right? So it's, you know, slightly simpler. And I literally think that's the only logic we need. And then at the very end, we would say cur dot is word equals true. And that's our insert. So very simple. Now, as for searching, we want to do the same thing, you know, get a current. We want to loop over all of the characters. Right. Um, but we want to make sure that every character exists. So what we can do here is we say if cur.letters c minus a, if it equals null at any point, return false. We know it can't exist. If that's not true, we update current. Same thing as above, right? We're just moving down the chain of our try. Once we exit, we need to make sure that the last, uh, we need to make sure that the current node is a word. So we can just say return cur dot is word. And that's that. And then starts with, it's going to be almost identical to our search. So let's just copy it. Right. And we'll change this to prefix. Um, if at any point it becomes null, that logic stays the same. Um, but if we make it out and we exit, we're just going to return true. And I think that's it. Nice. And that is it. All right. The next problem is intersection of two arrays given two integer arrays, nums one and nums two return an array of their intersection. Each element in the result must be unique and you may return the result in any order. So in the first example, um, only the number two intersects between nums one and nums two. And then in example two, only nine and four intersect. So let's um, just quickly look at the example that they give us. So nums one has four, nine, and five, right? Those are all of the unique numbers. Nums two has four, it has nine, uh, and eight, and that's it. And so the result only is four and nine. So this, this problem is pretty simple. I think um, we're going to need a set because um, we only want unique values. So I guess the first step is to convert nums1 to a set, and then we're going to loop over nums2, comparing the elements, adding them to an appropriate result. And I think that's it. Um, so... Let's just say set of integer um, set equals new hash set. We're going to need a set, which is as our result, right? Or it's not our result, actually, because we're supposed to return an integer array. We'll call it temp result, temporary result. And then let's loop over all of our nums from nums one, right? Set dot add num, right? And then 
we're going to loop over all of the numbers in nums2 and if the set contains num then temp result dot add num right and then we need to convert the temp result to a result. And it's going to be the size of our temp result. Size. And then we just need to loop over them all. I'll say result of i equals temp result. Oh. Actually, actually, this may have been the wrong way to go about it. I think I need to keep track of like an index here and then just say like in num of temp result and then result at i um, plus plus equals num and then we just return our result let's try it nice and that's it all right i think that's all the problems i'm going to solve for today so before i go don't forget to check out my platform algos with michael you can use the code algo help for a discount on the platform and i'll catch you guys later